this work-life balance week in my Zen Your Work in 2020 challenge. Now, if you don't know what the challenge is yet, or you haven't taken part, what you wanna do is head over to zenworkplace.com, follow the link to join my completely free community. Once you're in the community, head over to the group section and click on the Zen Your Work in 2020 group. It's a group of people that every single week we're to- focusing on a different topic about different mindfulness techniques you can use at work that have a highly practical application. If you join now, you can get caught up on all the things we've covered so far. That includes ideas around goal setting, confidence building, and even working with those most difficult coworkers. So ch- head over to zenworkplace.com if you want to know more about that. But I wanted to address this topic as the first thing we do when it comes to work-life balance this week, because there have been so many articles in the past couple of years that have come out that basically say, don't worry about that balance idea. There's no such thing as balance. And I'm sorry, it's just not true. Now, what usually is happening is there's a conflict in what the definition of balance is. So I wanted to go through this article, see what positive ideas we can take from it, because of course, almost everything has positive ideas that we can learn from. But I also wanted to spell a few myths that I've just seen coming up again over and over in the past couple of years around this specific topic. So I chose this article, Work Life balance is a myth. Do this instead. From Time Magazine, so pretty credible source. This was written about six months ago, six, seven months ago in June of 2019. If you think about it, work-life balance is a strange aspiration for a fulfilling life. Well, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stop right there. Work-life balance is not an aspiration for a fulfilling life. There are other things you need to incorporate for a completely fulfilling life. One is knowing what your purpose is knowing what you're trying to do, knowing what gifts you're trying to give the world. Work-life balance is one of those things you develop to facilitate you sharing your gifts with the world. It's about taking care of yourself so that you can give as much as you can to the people in your life. So I'm already disagreeing with this article. We're, We're gonna see how this goes. Balance is about stasis. No, it's not. (laughs) <laughs> I'll do my best Trump again. I love bringing my Trump impression into this wrong, wrong balance is about stasis, wrong. If our lives were ever in balance, parents happy, kids taking care of work working, then our overriding thought would be to shout, nobody move and pray all will stay the same forever. That is completely untrue. First of all, it's completely unrealistic. If there is one thing that is certain about life, it's that things are going to change no matter what things are going to change. I also think it's just this idea of how they're defining balance. It's kind of like everyone else is taken care of. Balance is not about everyone else. Balance is about you. Balance is this idea of balancing the internal, what your internal personal needs are with the external what you're giving out to the world. That's all the balance is. It's not about finding this perfect harmony of all these different elements that you have responsibility towards. It's about what you're doing to take care of yourself so that you can give your energy away to the things that matter most to you and know that you're still gonna be able to do things to fill up your cup and to be at your best. So that's what balance is. It's not how they're defining it here. This false hope is made worse by the categories themselves. They imply that work is bad. I've never implied work is bad. And life is good. I mean, life could go either way, couldn't it? We lose ourselves in work, but find ourselves in life. We survive work, but live life. So the challenge we are told is to balance the heaviness of work and the lightness of of life. Again, I completely disagree with their, this definition. This seems to be like a very, very judgmental approach to work. Everything has good and bad. And frankly, I mean, even going beyond that and getting a little philosophical for a moment, things only have the meaning that you give them. Nothing on its face is fundamentally good or fundamentally bad. Now, I'm sure you could bring up some examples to try to call that into question. You do, do so in the comments, I'll give you some answers. Um, but listen, nothing, not a single thing, not a single experience or relationship or anything is fundamentally good or fundamentally bad. 
the only thing it has is the meaning that we assign to it. So while I do, I, I kind of agree with where this is going, I do not believe we should be fundamentally characterizing work as bad. Work can be one of those ways that we fulfill our purpose, right? Purpose is part of what a fulfilling life is like. If you define it as bad, then it's going to be bad. If you define it as good, then it's going to be good. You have to commit either way, right? But it only has the meaning that you give to it. Yet work is not the opposite of life. Ah, I agree with that. It is instead a part of life, just as family is, as our friends and communities and hobbies. All of the aspects of living have to, their share of wonderful, uplifting moments, their share of moments that, and their share of moments that drag us down. The same is true of work. Yet when we think of it as inherently bad, in need of a counterweight, we lose sight of the possibility for the better. Okay, I'm, I'm on board with this. So that kind of just says what I just said. If you think that work is bad, if you are convinced that work is bad, it is a soul sucking experience, guess what? It is going to be a soul sucking experience. But if you change your perspective about work, I mean, what do they say about people who love their jobs? When you love your job, you never work a day in your life. It seems more useful then to try not to balance the unbalanceable. What an assumption. But I mean, and can we just talk about the irony here for a second of someone who's just said, don't judge something as bad, instantly coming back and making the assumption or the judgment, if you will, that it is impossible to achieve that balance. It's not impossible. It's only impossible if you say it is. But to treat work the same way you do life by maximizing what you love. Here's what we mean. Consider why two people doing exactly the same work seem to gain strengths and joy from different moments. When we interviewed several anesthesiologists, we found that while their title and job function are identical, the thrills and chills they feel in their job are not. One said he loved the thrill of holding a patient, holding each patient hovering at that one precise point between life and death, while he shuddered at the pressure of helping each patient get healthy once the operation was complete. Another said she loved the bedside conversations before the operation and the calm sensitivity required to bring a sedated patient back gently to consciousness without the panic that afflicts many patients. Another was drawn to the, to the intricacies of the anesthetic mechanism itself. Each ha and has dedicated herself to defining precisely how each drug does what it does. Each one of us, for no good reason other than the clash of chromosomes, draws from different Act activities, situations, moment, draw strengths from different activities, situations, moments, and interaction. Um, now, I mean, it, listen, this is not just the clash of the chromosome, why we have different preferences. This all comes back to, to our styles, the things that excite us, the things that motivate us. These things are actually very, very measurable. Um, so, I mean, what I see here is they're talking about three different people with three different work styles. They're each find, they each find fulfillment in their job, but they find that fulfillment for different reasons. And none of these things says fundamentally why they might have or lack balance either. All they're saying is people find joy in doing different things. Say this another way. Different people are different. Just because someone finds joy in something does not mean that same thing is going to evoke joy in you. We all have different preferences and tendencies. None are better than worse than, than any other. Think about your lives, many different activities as threads. Some are black, some are gray, some are white. They could have at least picked more fun colors. My God, why can't it be some are red and some are purple and some are neon green and, and all more, much more fun colors than that. But some of these activities to appear to be made of a different substance. These activities contain the telltale signs of love. Before you do them, you find yourself looking forward to them. While you're doing them, time speeds up, you find yourself in flow. And after you've done them, you feel invigorated. These are your red threads. And the research by the Mayo Clinic suggests that doctors who weave the fabric of their lives with at least 20% red threads are significantly less likely to experience burnout. I, that's really interesting. Let, let me just pull up this research by the Mayo Clinic. I, I suspect I'm not going to go full on into this research in this in this um, video because it might be, oh yeah, this is like super academic-y. Okay. 
but let's take a look at this. Clinical practice tied to burnout. Physicians work or their workplaces put them for risk of burnout. I mean, to be honest, like burnout is actually something that's very, very prevalent in just work in general. Several months ago, the WHO, the World Health Organization, actually uh, classified burnout as an officially diagnosable medical condition. So it's not just physicians that are experiencing this. Um, compared with the general population, physicians enter clinical practice healthy with a higher quality of life, lower burnout and depression, and lower rates of cancer and cardiovascular disease. Once in practice, they register lower work-life satisfaction and higher rates of burnout. You know, I'm not going to go deep into this one. I'm going to take their facts to kind of face level. I, I, you know, I would say, listen... Of all the jobs, I, healthcare is a really difficult industry to work in. If you work in healthcare, oh, my heart goes out to you. It is a it is a ex extraordinarily difficult industry to work in, and it's not just because of work life balance. But this is a different topic for a different day. Let's go back to our work life balance article. The simplest way for you to do this is spend a week in love with your job. I hope you spend significantly more than a week in love with your job. This sounds odd, but all it really means is to select a regular week at work, and take a pad around with you for the entire week. Down the middle of this pad, draw a vertical line, make two columns, and write loved it at the top of one column and loathed it at the top of the other. During the week, anytime you find yourself feeling one of the signs of love, scribble down exactly what you're doing in the loved it column. And anytime you find yourself feeling the inverse, something you do, something you procrastinate, while you do it, time drags. When you're done it, you hope you never have to do it again. Scribble down exactly what you're doing in the loathe column. Listen, I actually think this could be a really interesting exercise. I'm fundamentally opposed to putting too much energy into the into really hating the things that you already hate. Um, I don't think it actually gives you anything. I, th I, I would much rather you change your perspective about them rather than just kind of sinking in and rather leaning into just hating them so much. But I love the, I mean, one of the, the benefits of doing that though is that oftentimes we know what we want based on contrast, based on something we don't like. So for example, if you took a cold shower and really, really hated it as most normal people will, well, guess what? You know you don't want a cold shower. What does that mean? It means you want a warm shower, right? You know you hate the cold shower, you want a warm shower instead. You learn what you want by contrast. So I think that could be actually a pretty valuable thing. And I'm actually pr very, very much in favor of keeping track of what really drives you that energy, making you feel really good, putting you in flow. I think that's a really good exercise. Obviously, there'll be plenty of activities in your week that don't make either list, but if you spend a week in love with your work, by the end of the week, you will see a list of activities in your loved it column that feel different to you than the rest of your work. You'll have a different emotional balance creating in you a distinct and distinctly positive feeling, one that draws you in and lifts you up. Our research, a stratified random sample of the working populations of 19 counties, revealed that 73% of us claim that we have the freedom to modify our job to fit our strengths, but only 18% of us do so. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to read that one again. 73% of us claim we have the freedom to modify the job to fit our strengths better, but only 18% of us choose to do so. Listen. If you aren't making the choice to take advantage of the flexibility and the options you have, that's on you. You've got to take responsibility for this stuff. Don't don't spend time playing victim. Don't spend time complaining or gossiping in the kitchen about how much you hate your job and how much uh, your lack of work-life balance and all this stuff. Don't do that. Simply look for the options that you have and make the choice to take advantage of them. Your challenge then is to use your red threads to intellectually change over time the content of your job so that it contains more things you love doing and fewer things you're aching to escape. Brilliant. I'm completely on board with that. The most helpful category for us are not work and life. We should not struggle to balance the two. Instead, the best categories are love and loathe. Our goal is should be to, little by little, week by week, intentionally imbalance all aspects of our work towards the former and away from the latter. Not simply to make us feel better, but do so 
that are, but so that our colleagues, our friends, and our family can all benefit from us at our very best. This is a really important sentence. Listen, work-life balance is an inherently selfish thing, but sometimes being selfish is a really good thing and it allows you to show up for the other people in your life at your full self. Sometimes it's okay to be selfish because being selfish allows you to do to take care of yourself in a way that you need to and to do the things that you need to do to really show up and serve the people in your life. We can't always do what we love but we can always find the love in what we do. Now, I definitely agree with this last sentence. I think there's a lot left out in this article. I think that there's a lot of commentary around how can you find love in what you do and things that maybe you once found fulfilling that you don't find fulfilling anymore. Why is that? I think there's a lot to be said about changing your perspective in how you're looking at things. You know, once you get into a negative funk with some things, it can be really, really easy to stay in that funk for years and you forget that, things weren't always negative. It maybe it was a simple change in perspective. And if your perspective changed for something that was positive and fulfilling for you and went over to negative, well, guess what, folks? You can change it back, but you have to make the proactive choice to do so. At the end of the day, I, I am not opposed to this exercise of doing the loved it list and the loathed it list and figuring out how to do more of what you love in your day to day. I just think there has been, you know, not a lot of commentary around how do you just put basic practices in place that are going to support a balance for you. And again, how I am defining balance is that it's a balance of resources that you're giving to yourself to take care of your internal needs and resources that you are giving the world. That is the balance that we're looking for. Okay, so if you're in the community, I'm going to be posting this video along with a little exercise that you can do to start bringing that more in balance. I would actually encourage you to do the loved it, loved it exercise too if you want to. I think it can be a really great thing. Um, but we are going to be doing that in the community. So if you haven't joined yet, again, head over to zenworkplace.com, join the free community, and I hope to see you there.